Hello everybody, I hope you're all well and welcome back to the Voice Notes podcast with Jordan Teresa, where I chat everything, my life, pop culture, internet trends, reality TV and so much more. Yes guys, I have switched, I just realised I've left the cat fountain on again, one second. (laughs) I have switched the intro round to be at the absolute beginning because it's getting a little bit absurd that all of my intros are at least 40 minutes long. Like it's silly, it's silly, but reminds reminding me of when I switched off the uh, water fountain was me, Jack and Adam and Eleanor, we all went for drinks last Friday and um, we all went out afterwards, had a little bit of a boogie, whatever, got in at a decent time, I think we got in at about three in the morning Um, and Jack sleeps over, say bye to him in the morning, yeah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Um, (laughs) uh, I notice two days after he's left, that Boots's fountain is switched off. And I was actually like, because I switch it off to record these episodes, but I remember switching it back on. So I was like, did I switch it off again? So I messaged Jack and I'm like, did you switch off Boots's water fountain? He was like, oh my God, I thought that was a humidifier. <laughs> and I was like, wow, so you tried to kill my cat. Okay, cool. I mean, it's okay because one of you guys said in the comments that Boots, get, boots that cats, including Boots, uh, get a majority of their moisture from water not water oh my god wet food so literally she never goes near that fountain ever like I don't actually have the, see the point of even having it around but obviously just in case like don't want to fucking nearly kill my cat um but yeah how is everyone doing today I actually have an absolute bee in my bonnet today like I am moody I think I'm not even that hungover. Like I had three doubles last night, fell asleep at 11 p.m. Like me, Jack and Lem went to go see this <laughs> Cleopatra themed WrestleMania at my local theater. It was so, guys, like we were in bits of how just ridiculous this this um, excursion was. Um, but me and Jack, we want to do like a special bonus episode where we talk about... <laughs> where we talk about the WrestleMania because it was so fucking funny guys I might actually have that episode as like because basically what I want to do is I want to upload an episode on Christmas day because not only do a lot of people don't celebrate Christmas so and like like, they probably have the day off but like they don't have anything to do because everything's closed there's no public transport stuff like that people don't post a lot on Christmas. I feel like it's like some people spend Christmas alone. I spent Christmas alone before when I had COVID. Um, Some people work on Christmas and like want something for the journey to work. Respect for people that work on Christmas. Oh my God. Um, So yeah, basically I want to upload a special Christmas episode and I feel like the best one would be to do the bonus episode with Jack because, okay, you know, I need to stop running my mouth so much, but I'm going to New York. I'm going to New York. Me, Adam and Eleanor are all going to New York to see Jack uh, at the end of October, just after my birthday. Yep, guys, it's my birthday month. It's my birthday month. Who's excited? I'm going to be 25. Oh my God. I'm going to have to click the 25 to 32 uh, category scary oh my god um and representative of my quarter life crisis is yes if you are watching this you are seeing that correctly I got an eyebrow piercing Ah! so oh my god so let me tell you guys about it so um so basically I (laughs) this is is actually embarrassing so I noticed (laughs) sorry so I noticed that there was nothing edgy going on with my look (laughs) like I feel like I'd gone very wholesome with my look, you know, thick feathered brows, like the only thing that like blonde hair, like all this, the only thing that was like really like edgy about me was like my septum piercing and septum piercings are no, they're not edgy anymore. Like it's not like it was 10 years ago where like this was a radical statement. Um, It's just, yeah, no, it's but that's cool. It's fine if things are basic, it's fine. Cause I, especially cause I think, Everyone that has a septum piercing looks cool as fuck. Um, 
So anyways, so I wanted to get something different and I didn't know whether to thin out my eyebrows and get it pierced or whether to bleach my eyebrows. I consulted Lem and Lem told me that he does not like the look of bleached eyebrows. Now, does this sound like that I let my man decide for me what I should do with my face? Yes, I understand how that looks. I understand how that doesn't look great. Um, <laughs> I'm literally trying to like salvage them. But I think everyone is allowed to have their preferences. Like, I feel like it would be too much if Lem said to me like, oh, by the way, if you bleached your eyebrows, I'm breaking up with you because I think they're so ugly. Like nothing like that. He just, he was, he was like, I don't really like bleached eyebrows. Julia Fox was actually fucking right when she said that men hate bleached eyebrows. Um, he was like, I don't really like bleached eyebrows. Um, I'd rather you get it pierced. And I'm literally like, okay, okay. Also bleached eyebrows are a lot of maintenance and also your eyebrows are probably like dry as fuck when you bleach them. So I had a little thinky and he is allowed to have preferences, you guys. I know this feels like majorly unfeminist of me, but also like I would gen like Lem has floated the eye. So Lem has lovely long hair. He has twists. I love his hair. His hair and his smile are my two favorite features of his. Um, and his hair's gotten really long recently. He started wearing a headband. Okay, Jack Grealish. Okay. Um, he started wearing a headband and everything and he just looks so sexy. And he floated the idea of shaving his head. And I, no, no. And the thing is, it's not like I've got things against men with shaved heads uh, because my ex actually had a shaved head and, I, and it actually really suited him. But when I met Lem, he had just partially grown out his shaved head that he shaved over lockdown. And he it, it, he's not thriving with a shaved head, I'll tell you that. Um, so I much prefer it when he's got his lovely long hair. Um, so, you know, he's allowed to have his preferences. So I decided very much on a whim that I was gonna get my eyebrow pierced, did a little bit of research, found a place in Camden, paid 40 quid um, and booked my appointment. And one, guys, I I feel like this is weird. Lem tells me this is weird. I really don't like piercings. I think it's because I once got all up my ear pierced in one go and I actually heard the crunch of the piercing and I have like, ugh, like, and also getting my septum pierced, getting your septum pierced will genuinely change the trajectory of your life. Like I've never experienced pain like it. So basically when it comes to piercings, I, I would literally rather sit through an hour long tattoo than get another piercing done. Like <laughs> that's a bit dramatic, but like get a cartilage, sorry, this top. Oh my God. It's like, you know, it's like, I don't, to be fair, this top is fucking banging, but I don't know how to position it. Anyways, um, I low key want to change. I feel like, sorry, you know, I'm just having one of those like insecure days. Maybe I should just wear it like this. Okay, whatever. Um, you know, we're just having one of those insecure days. Uh, but anyways, whatever. Um, God, sorry, I can't even remember what I was saying. So yeah, and honestly guys, it was absolutely fine. Like it didn't even hurt. One thing I will say is that I was violently humbled um, when she clamped it. And I thought that that was the piercing. Luckily I didn't say anything, but I was like, fucking hell, this is easy. And then she pierced it. And I was like, ah! Um, I mean, I didn't actually go like that. Like I went, <sighs> you know and it was absolutely fine it doesn't hurt now um I really really hope that it doesn't I don't get any fucking keloids on it I've been like avoiding makeup on it um but yeah this is my new slate I'm repissing love it um and just before we go further into the episode I would love to thank today's sponsor Lingoda Thank you so much, Lingoda, for sponsoring this episode. They're going to be sponsoring a few episodes for the rest of the year, and I'm so excited to work with them. If you don't know what Lingoda is, they are an online language school. I have shared it on the podcast before that half of my family is French. Uh, they Half of them live in France. Uh, my dad speaks fluent French, um, and I want to learn French. I've always wanted to learn French and I've tried apps and different things and it just hasn't really stuck or worked. And I think another problem is that like, maybe this is just a me thing, but I feel like there is like this level of like, <laughs> like I felt a little bit embarrassed um, to like go into a language school or an online language uh, school or course as like a complete beginner. Like it's actually, it's very vulnerable. <laughs> 
But Lingoda have a really wide range of classes from absolute beginners to advanced in multiple different languages. I'm learning French, but they also have English, business English, German, and Spanish. And they have native level teachers and they're also very small classes. It's three to five people per class. So it feels very personable. It's just like a really welcoming, comfortable environment. And it's very immersive as well. And I think one thing that I like about it is I can just do it whenever I want to. The classes are 24 seven online, available all the time. So if I wanna get my brain juices flowing in the morning, I can log on and do a class. Or if I want to do something after work, if I wanna do something on my lunch break, I just find at the moment that I feel like my brain is rotting um, <laughs> because I've been scrolling on my phone so much. So I think it's good to just have a side hobby, which is actually stimulating for my brain, like a side hobby that isn't just scrolling on my phone endlessly into the abyss. Um, <laughs> and Lingoda also do these really cool things called sprint challenges. Um, I know my friend Jack has done them a lot where you can take 15 classes in 30 days and if you complete all of your classes, then you get 50% cash back or you get 15 credits. One credit is to one group lesson. Or you can do the Super Sprint Challenge and do 30 classes in one month. Um, and you can get 50% cash back if you complete it or 30 class credits. Like it's just so good and it's such a good motivation. And also I think these sprint challenges are really good because it's just good to enforce a habit. It's good to enforce habits. Um, and I just feel like I'm gonna learn really quickly and hopefully my knowledge will improve in quite a short span of time and Lingoda are currently holding another 30 day super sprint challenge which you can all sign up to using my link in the description. So you will be enforcing the habit of learning a new language every single day and again if you complete the classes you will get 50% cash back or 30 class credits like sorry it's just too good and not only that not only that but they are offering you all a discount code if you use the code VOICENOTES20, all capitals, that's V-O-I-C-E-N-O-T-E-S-2-0. You will get 20 euros off or $25 off your Sprint registration. Is that what it's called? Yes, your Sprint registration. Sorry, Lingoda. Um, and make sure you use my link in the description to sign up to Lingoda and take part in the Sprint. See if you guys can get your 50% cash back or your credits. Um, and yeah, I will also be logging my French learning journey over on my Instagram. So make sure you guys go and follow and let me know if you're doing it as well. Let me know what language you're doing anyone else that's learning French uh, because I want us to all be in this together uh, but yes thank you so much Lingoda and let's carry on talking so I'm having a little bit of a low self-esteem day today ish I mean to be fair my eyebrow piercing I look like a sleigh queen so it's you know like it's <laughs> it, it comes and goes but it's more like uh, I'm having some problems with my hair again guys so this is not a problem with the hairdresser who did my extensions. I think it's one of those things where tape extensions, they're amazing. They're so comfortable. Um, and I did everything she told me to, but unfortunately a ton of them have fallen out and it's just been three weeks, um, which is such a shame. I'm going back on Tuesday to talk to her um, again. It's, she's like literally so nice. It was not her fault. And I don't think it's my fault either. I think it's one of those things where the, it's just not compatible with my hair, like um, getting tape extensions, um, which is such a massive shame. But also I think I've been needing this kick up the ass to get my hair into better shape and health. Um, and I'm pretty sure they're going to like help me like fix it and stuff for free, I'm hoping, because I spent a lot of money on my hair um, for all of them to, like half of them to fall out in three weeks. Again, I don't think it's the fault of the hairdresser at all. And I don't think it's the fault of me either. But basically what, well, obviously I've been having to tie my hair back up again. And I think there's something about slicking your hair back and wearing a big t-shirt that like actually, <laughs> 
sorry. I'm such a fucking child. Um, slicking your hair back and wearing a big t-shirt is not, it does not do good things for your self-esteem. So I wanted to wear like a sexy top, but this top swings quite low and it's making me insecure about my chest because I feel like I have a really big gap between my neck and my boobs. Dumb insecurities, dumb insecurities. I hate being a woman and I hate talking badly about myself on the internet, especially when I have such a good track record of being completely up my own ass, <laughs> looks wise. Um, but anyways, so I'm gonna go on Tuesday, but I'm gonna propose this plan. I'm gonna ask her what she thinks. So basically I have a mixture of blonde and ginger extensions in right now. And the blonde ones, a majority of the blonde ones have come out. So now it's not blending. Even when I tie my hair in a ponytail, you can see what, what the extension is, what isn't it? like, guys. So I'm thinking I'm going to ask her, because instead of her just sticking them all back in, which is, I, I feel like is not gonna help um unfortunately I think it's one of those things where because my hair is damaged but it's extremely thick um I think what I'm gonna do is a little bit close to my birthday or to be fair I might do it fairly soon um and just see how much it is because I'm hoping that they'll put the extensions back in for free because like I spent so much money <laughs> guys um but anyways I'm thinking take the extensions out dye my hair an all over ginger, maybe the same ginger as the ginger extensions, keep the blonde extensions, put them to one side, um, and sorry, try to thought, um, put the blonde extensions to one side. And if I want to go get highlights in the summer again, I will, but put them to the side and then just see where my hair length is at, dye it an all over color ginger, and then just fill out the sides with some extensions and see how that goes. I feel like that's the only solution right now because this long hair extension, like no, like it's just not working. And it's such a shame because it looked so good. Like she was, she's a big, like the hairdresser is extremely talented. I think it's just one of those things where it's not compatible with my hair, which is such a shame. Um, but it's okay. Like I'm trying to remain positive, but you know, it's just like, oh my God, like I just want to have hair that I'm happy with. And it's like such a big insecurity of mine, my hair. Um, and yeah, but I think it's just because my hair is dried out as fuck because of my bloody bleaching it, extensions, all this. So yeah. Um, so I am going to New York, guys. I am so fucking excited. I'm gonna record a lot of podcast episodes when I'm out there. Obviously, I wanna, re sorry, I wasn't holding the mic close to me. Obviously, I want to record a podcast episode with Jack about our WrestleMania experience. <laughs> our WrestleMania our Wrestlemania experience but also I am seeing a few commentary youtubers guys um and some of them I'm actually meeting them for the first time um and I'm basically gonna have like a stockpile of podcast episodes and I am so excited for you guys I'm not gonna reveal but just think about the commentary youtubers that you know that live in New York you know, the commentary guy, the commentary girl is that are sort of like me. I'm also working on a new, I've had such a fucking lazy week this week. I've been lazy. Like I've been working, but I haven't been very motivated. Very weird. Um, but I guess that's quite normal. But you know, it's just like, I just feel again, I think I've got a bee in my bonnet because I just feel overwhelmed. <laughs> like my flat is a fucking mess. I have so much work to do. Um, uh, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, but I'm currently working on a video, a video about sorority talk and Bama Rush, which I am really, really excited to put out for you guys. But it's one of those things where it, it's, it's a beast. It's a beast. And I didn't think of doing it until, I'm trying to remember, I must have seen something and I was like, oh, you know what? That's a really good video. I remember I was brainstorming. I had an idea for a different video, um, but I was brainstorming and uh, this one came up instead. And I was like, I have so much more to say about that. And it's going to be an absolute beast. It's gonna be an absolute beast. Um, so I wanna make sure I get all the info in, but also I want to get it up in like a couple of weeks at least, at least. Um, I especially wanna get it up before my birthday. I especially wanna get it up before New York um, because also it's sponsored as well. Oh my God, guys, so the video is gonna be sponsored by Love and Pies. So it's like an app. It's like a Merge Mansion type app. 
but let me tell you guys, I am addicted to this game. I'm addicted, like, I am addicted to Love and Pies. I can't stop fucking playing it. And I think that's what makes these videos better, like these sponsorships better, is when you're when you use the product and you actually really love it. Cause then it's like, guys, you have to you have to get on this. I'm obsessed. I'm showing Jack my calf. It looks so good. <laughs> um but yeah, no, so I'm working on that video and anything else to update you on in my life? I guess it's quite fun leave like that my podcast format that I thought of solo episode guest mini sewed is like so banging because I haven't really sat down and spoken to you guys properly in an entire month. So I actually have shit to say. It's great. It's great. Um, so shall we do TV show I'm watching, book I'm reading, song I'm listening to? Sorry, I feel like I'm being actually a little bit delirious today. I think it might be because I'm a little bit hungover. Um, like it was one of those things where I was in bed and I was like, I'm gonna have to order a McDonald's, otherwise I will not be able to get up. <laughs> so I feel like I'm like being really weird. I'm sorry guys. Um, but TV show I'm watching, I didn't write this down. What am I watching at the moment? Uh, me and Lemma re-watching The Walking Dead. He's on season three. He's enjoying it a lot more than season two. Um, also watching Barry, One Piece. There's a movie that I watched recently that I wanted to tell you guys about. What was it? Um, okay, I can't remember what movie I watched recently that I really liked, but I'm just going to tell you guys in the next episode. Um, and songs I'm listening to. Olivia Rodrigo's album is so good. I don't really listen to albums like that, but her album is so good. I've been listening to a lot of Olivia Rodrigo. That's why I got this eyebrow piercing. Um... I've been listening to a lot of like piano-y, like what's the word? There's a word for it that like, it sets the mood, ambient. There we go, the ambiance, uh, the ambient music. So I've been listening to, oh, I've been listening to Weird Fishes by Radiohead. That's a fucking banger. That's such like a London blue skies, chilly fur coat song. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've also been listening to Just Give Me One More Day. Uh, QKTHR by Aphex Twin. Um, and yeah, that's all the songs I've been listening to. What other stuff have I been listening to? Um, Glisten by the Wind. That's another good piano y song. Uh, yes, that's what I've been listening to. And the book I'm reading is I am reading. Uh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? What's it called? It's in my fur coat. I can't remember what it's called. All right, I'm going to search up. Sorry, I posted it on my story. Swimming in the Dark by Tom Thomas Jedrowski. Really sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I haven't actually searched up how to pronounce his name, sorry. Um, but yeah, no, so I've been reading that book. It's a uh, queer love story set in Poland during the Soviet Union. Uh, very interesting, beautifully written, beautifully written, got really good pacing as well. I found that I was in a very big reading slump. Um, and I think one thing about nonfiction books is that it's so much information to take in. There's so much, there's so much more difficult to get through that you hit these reading slumps and you literally can't get out of them because you feel like you've been reading forever and you barely make a dent in the book and it's so demotivating. Um, so anyone looking to get out of a reading slump, I highly recommend Swimming in the Dark. Really, really beautiful book. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is something that I don't want to talk about. I don't enjoy talking about stuff like this because it makes me sad. Like to put it very simply, it makes me sad. And I very much want this podcast to be a safe space for women and girls and you know, non-binary people and also men as well. Um, if, I mean, to be fair, my men listenership is so fucking low. But do you know what I mean? I want this to be a safe space for everyone who, it's quite difficult to word, but I want my podcast to be a safe space for people who see fit, right? And I very much view my podcast as like this girly, hun space where switch on in the morning and you can listen to me chat away. And I feel like I've, I've just cultivated the loveliest community on here. And honestly, this podcast is my proudest achievement. It is my proudest achievement. It's probably the part of my work that I enjoy the most. Like, yes, I hit slumps, but 
you guys make it absolutely worth it. So sometimes I do avoid, you know, I'll post about it on my other socials, but I do avoid talking about really dark, sad things because I don't want to upset anyone that's listening. And I also don't want to upset myself. But also, I want to make a difference. I have like career plans in which I want to make a difference. And this is something which we are just going to have to talk about. If you do want to skip over it, that's absolutely fine. We are going to be talking about things in regard of Russell Brand. We are going to be talking about the really tragic, awful, horrifying crime attack that happened in Croydon. So if that's something that you don't want to listen to right now, um, feel free to skip ahead. There are timestamps on the YouTube uh, version of this podcast. So a couple of weeks ago, there was a Dispatches documentary about uh, British comedian Russell Brand, who was always this like off the wall, crazy, risky British comedian. He was very open about being an addict, being addicted to drugs, alcohol, also being addicted to sex. Um, And recently it came out that he has been accused from by three different women of sexual assault and rape. And one of those women was a girl. They were a 16 year old girl in school um, and he used to send a driver to her school to pick her up um, and he was obsessed with the fact that he was taking her virginity. Um, Yeah, and there is a full article about it on the Times if you don't wanna watch the documentary. I read the article, I haven't watched the documentary. Um, But I think, I am just fucking fed up. And I think it was the response that really, really got to me. You know, the thing is with Russell Brand is that he hasn't been in mainstream media really for years. He now has a YouTube channel. Um, I think he has like over 5 million subscribers. Um, and he very much has veered off into the wellness uh, space. And something about the wellness space is that it's what it's very famously conspiratorial and right wing. So Russell Brand has cultivated this following of people who believe conspiracies are more conspiracies are more believable to them. I'm actually reading a book about QAnon. And I think something which is the appeal of people who are really right-wing and conspiratorial and are in QAnon or are anti-vaxxers is that I think people like the idea of being in the know of something that no one else is and being like, God, these people are so stupid because I know this is true. I think people have like these very romanticized ideas in their head and these glamorized ideas in their head of like overthrowing the government as like the little man, creating a revolution. Da, 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 da. Um, so Russell Brand has a very conspiratorial and right wing audience, a very big one. Um And the response that I saw, like, obviously there were a lot of people who were supportive of the victims, who believe what they're saying, who, you know, who are appalled by um, Russell Brand's behavior. But I think I was just shocked at the... Oh my God, I don't know why I'm getting upset. I don't know why I'm shocked. I think the problem is, is that like when you like your social media is an echo chamber right so when you go on a a website like twitter and just search his name where you can find tweet basically sorry um there were many tweets with tens of thousands of likes tens of thousands of likes of people supporting russell brand accusing these women of being liars one a uh, female comedian tweeted that she had had sex with Russell Brand 15 years earlier and he didn't uh, she he didn't assault her so clearly these women are lying yes i'm being serious that was something that someone actually tweeted 
Um, Andrew Tate has said that the government are going after Russell, like they've, the media have gone after Russell Brand now. Tommy Robinson has as well. Lawrence Fox has. I mean, we're not surprised all these men are pieces of shit like the... Um, and basically, because he has this conspiratorial audience, now it's become like it's a grand conspiracy against him because he was telling the truth about the media. First of all, how big does your ego have to be to think that the government and the media are trying to take you, Russell Brand, down? Like, it's one of those things where two people who are into QAnon they think it's like the biggest thing in the world. Like they think that these people who follow Russell Brand and look up to him think he's this huge figure when he just isn't. Before this, I hadn't thought about Russell Brand in years, in actual years. So I haven't written a ton of notes on this. So I'm really sorry if it's coming across as like extremely scrambled. But the fact that to a lot of people, a conspiracy is more believable than the fact that Russell Brand is a sexual predator is a joke, especially being as he has a recorded history of dating 16 year old girls. And the thing is, is that a lot of these men, these big men like Andrew Tate and Lawrence Fox and Tommy Robinson, you know, these men who are like big figures amongst the right wing and like misogyny and stuff like that. Um, is that they they know, they know that it's not a conspiracy, they know that it's probably true, but it doesn't support their agenda, it doesn't support their cause, so they, and they, they know that they can manipulate their audience into believing that it is a conspiracy, because to right-wing people, right-wing conspiracy theorists, a conspiracy is more believable than a man who has a history of dating 16-year-old girls, flashing people, calling people, saying that they've shagged their granddaughters on the fucking radio. Him being a sexual predator is less believable than it's a conspiracy theory because the media want to take down Russell Brand, even though he's literally not fucking relevant at all. Um, and I think, again... The, let's, let's talk about the 16 year old girl. So something that I find extremely jarring is I think it was Ben Shapiro. Shock. Again, I'm just naming all these fucking right wing, like, <laughs> like, of course they're going to have shitty views though. But Ben Shapiro posts this thing saying, uh, the girl was 16. The girl was 16. Um, which is, is that shitty? Yeah. But it's not illegal in the UK. One thing is that I don't like when Americans comment on UK law like they know shit. The consent laws in the UK, the age of consent being 16 does not exist. So a 40 year old man can shag a 16 year old without legal repercussions. The age of consent being 16 exists because the British law wanted to acknowledge that 16 year olds shag each other. The age of consent being 16, I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm pretty sure is so 16 year olds can have easier access to abortions, contraception, things like that. The age of consent being 16 does not exist so a 15 year old, 50 year old man can shag a 16 year old. It does not fucking exist because of that. And again, a 16 year old is a fucking child. Yet yeah, just because this whole, oh, well, technically it's legal. Technically it's legal. Yeah, just because legality does not, does not align with morality. Like, le like, oh my God. And another thing which boils my fucking piss is I spoke, I've spoken about this on my TikTok before, but that is a, like, people talk a lot about teen moms and like the problems with teen moms. There is not a teen mum problem because I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to remember the statistics, but it's, the statistic is something like over 40% of babies mothered by teenagers. The father is over the age of 18. The father is a fully grown man. We don't have a problem with teen girls getting pregnant. We have a problem with older men preying on teenage girls. And again, what do we do? We focus on the women. Why? Because people are fucking misogynistic. And another thing that oh, makes me so angry is the fact that these men, like Andrew Tate, like Lawrence Fox, like Tommy Robinson, they will use women to further their bigotry. 
Lawrence Fox will say he's protecting women because he doesn't want transgender women to use uh, women's bathrooms. Um, this female comedian, I can't even remember her name because she's that fucking irrelevant to me. Her bio was protector of women's rights. If someone's Twitter bio is protector of women's rights, it usually means that they're a turf. So I'm going to assume that. Again, another person using the cause of women and women's liberation and women's freedom to further her own bigotry. Someone like Tommy Robinson, who said he was trying to protect women from Asian grooming gangs. But as soon, as soon as the assailant, if that's the right word, is white, is straight, all of a sudden... All of a sudden, it's a conspiracy against them. And you know why? It's because these men see themselves in the victim and they see themselves going down as well. And it just makes me so angry. It makes me so angry. And I think that they know they're not stupid. <sighs> like no nothing is good enough. No evidence. See, there's a whole innocent until proven guilty. First of all, doesn't even fucking apply in this country because in the UK, the amount of rapes that get taken to the police, only 1% ever get convicted. So innocent until proven guilty isn't even a correct metric. And even if they are proven guilty, it's not enough. It then becomes a grand conspiracy. It then fucking becomes a grand conspiracy. Nothing is ever enough for these men because they don't like women. They hate women women if they the only the only thing that they see women as as sexual objects to get gratification from and something to use to further their bigotry that's all that they view women as they don't view women as multifaceted human beings they don't view women as their peers they don't view women as their equals. They see women so far underneath them. They just see them as holes to shag and tools to use to further their own bigotry, to further their own career. And it boils my fucking piss, especially, especially the women that get on this side. Because you know what? There's a lot of fucking money to get from grifting. I can tell you that. I mean, I haven't experienced it, but a lot of fucking money to get from grifting. I saw it was a GB News presenter and GB News is fucking scum. So like, I don't, again, it's, it's just scummy people. Do you know what I mean? Who said on air that these women that Russell Brand had, that were accusing Russell Brand were liars. And like, why do you think that women never come out about anything? Because nothing's ever good enough. If it gets proven, it's a conspiracy. If it doesn't get proven, it's innocent until proven guilty. It makes me really fucking upset. And the next thing I want to talk about is the fact that this misogyny that we see so rampant online has real life consequences. Two days ago, Eliana Andam was stabbed in the neck with a machete by her friend's ex-boyfriend who was trying to give her friend flowers. Her friend rejected him and he pulled out a machete and Eliana went to protect her friend and she got stabbed in the neck with a machete and she died at the scene. And, you know, she was 15 years old, man. Like, she was a baby. And, like, we need to do more for our girls we need to do sorry and what's so infuriating is that I'm already seeing fucking discourse on Twitter the fact that it's not related to misogyny that it's just like a freak violent act that you can't link these things to misogyny and it's fucking infuriating because first of all in the UK misogyny isn't even considered a hate crime this year they decided that it wasn't going to be considered a hate crime because apparently it causes more harm than good to victims don't understand how so in this country oh god sorry i don't know why i'm crying so much it just makes me so sad but you can get fucking beaten to a pulp you can get fucking called a slag and a slut and a whore and a 
bitch. All these fucking misogynistic terms. Yeah, and you can get beaten to a fucking pulp nearly to death. You can get killed and it won't be considered a misogynistic hate crime. It won't be considered gender-based violence. And what is that teaching our children? What is that teaching the next generation? What is that teaching men that we don't take this shit fucking seriously? You know, and people think that these things aren't related, but it's a pyramid of violence. Like the best way that I've seen it displayed is that it's a pyramid of violence. So all the way at the bottom is things like catcalling, you know, believing in the concept of body counts and virginity and things like that. And then all the way at the top is murder, rape, sexual assault. And these things are a pyramid and they get, they get worse. They get progressively worse. And you know, for example, Sarah Everard, who was murdered by a police officer, who, Wayne Cousins, she, um, Wayne Cousins was accused of masturbating publicly twice, um, he also was nicknamed the rapist at work, um, and none of these things were ever taken seriously, and now someone has died, and someone's lost their child, someone's... You know, she should still be here. Eliana should still be here. All these fucking girls that have been killed by fucking men who get radicalised online. Men who fucking push it and push it and push it and push it. Start out with cat calling. Start out with the, with the little things. You know, murdering someone because you got rejected is a byproduct of the idea that women owe you sex, that women owe you their company. You know, ev nearly every mass shooting in the US, these very young white boys who walk into fucking supermarkets, schools, malls, and fucking shoot up the place, so, so many of them have been linked to the incel movement. These men were using incel forums. Elliot Rogers made a video about how angry he was that women would not sleep with him. All of these men have talked about the fact that women don't want to sleep with them and staying on these forums where they get radicalized and end up killing a bunch of people. And yeah, it's not, yeah, we don't consider that terrorism. People don't fucking consider that terrorism because people have really Islamophobic ideas of what terrorism is. Like, why do you think that women don't come forward about anything? Because this is how they're treated. The only time I've ever seen an abuser be fully held accountable was Amber Heard. And she wasn't even a fucking abuser. She was a victim of a misogynistic smear campaign. Again, this constant, what if it was the other way round? Men are obsessed. Men are obsessed with being fucking vindicated and being, oh, well, look, it's the other way round. So we have to teach her. What if it was the other way round? It's always the fucking other way round. It's always the other way round. We're failing our fucking children. We're failing our children. And I'm scared for having a daughter for when she goes out into the world. And I'm also fucking scared of having a son because he could go around a friend's house with fucking internet connection. And like that, he's been fucking radicalized. And it makes me so fucking angry and upset. And it's just tragic. It's tragic. We owe... And it's just not taken seriously. It's not taken seriously. It's not seen as radicalization. It's not seen as terrorism when it is. Oh my God, I'm really sorry, guys. I didn't mean to get so emotional. It's just, I want to make a difference and sometimes I feel like nothing's ever going to get better. I think misogyny is so deeply rooted in people. And me talking about the fact that misogyny isn't a hate crime, I'm not trying to say it's worse than any other, you know, these things so often intersect. Racism and misogyny and transphobia and homophobia and ableism and classism, it all intersects with one another. <sighs> but basically, I just wanted to talk, I just wanted to get it off my chest. And sorry if my thoughts were really fucking scrambled I just wanted to like get it off my chest really because all of these women who have been murdered because men are taught that we, that women owe them sex that women owe them their company 
you know, all of these is such a fucking disservice. It's such a disservice. If you do want to read more about this topic, I highly recommend reading the book Men Who Hate Women by Laura Bates. Is it the most depressing book I've ever read in my life? Yes. But it's so informative about the incel movement and these online hate groups. Sorry, guys, I had to take a little bit of a breather um, because I found myself getting very upset and emotional. And I'm sorry if I actually seemed like incoherent. Um, it's just something which has really been on my mind. And I really wanted to talk about it. And this podcast is a safe space um, for women everywhere and everyone everywhere. And um, I feel like as much as I want this to be like a positive space, you know, misogyny is something that I am so passionate about um, that of course I'm going to have to talk about it. Like, of course I am. I can't just avoid this and just post something on my story and call it a day. I have to talk about these things. I have to word these things. I especially think when you talk about these things, not only does it like make the comments, you know, become a place where people can discuss it amongst each other. I think sometimes when you hear people talk about things, it makes you think of it in a way that you never would have thought about it before. And I think especially if you, if you guys leave some comments about it. Yeah, basically. Um, but I thought now uh, I would do the Agony Aunt segment. If you haven't listened to voice notes before, this is a brand spanking new Agony Aunt segment for season two. If you email voicenotesfixmylife at gmail.com, uh, then you can submit a problem and I will answer it. I answer it on my solo episodes and I answer them on my guest episodes. The only episodes I don't answer are the minisodes. So two a month. Um, but let's get into it. Hi Jordan, first of all, I love you and you're my favorite YouTuber. Second of all, I really need help, thanks in advance. Thank you so much, Queen. So I have a friend, she is a lovely girl, but I don't always agree with everything she says or does. She really wants to be in a relationship and constantly complains about being single. And I feel her as dating apps when you like men are hell. <laughs> However, she has managed to end up in multiple situationships over the last few years, but they all end in a similar way. Now, I love her, but she really has main character syndrome and thinks everything revolves around her and that everyone needs to do things for her benefit and isn't willing to compromise ever. I'm sorry, guys. My boyfriend was screaming at FIFA and it actually makes me... <laughs> oh my God, it makes me so annoyed. Anyone else who like when their boyfriend plays games and they talk to people, especially because my boyfriend has a very like loud voice and it's quite it's quite I mean is his voice deep not really but I guess it's like you know how it's like men's voices they like resonate they, they it's almost like the vibrations travel he has one of those voices so even when he's being quiet I'm like shut up um I do love him though um anyways back onto the story so now, I love her, but she really has main character syndrome and thinks everything revolves around her and that everyone needs to do things for her benefit and isn't willing to compromise ever. For example, when I wanted to go out for drinks for my birthday, just us two, I sent her some links to some places and she said she didn't want to travel out of her ends to meet me and sent me a link to a bar near her house, an hour plus journey away from me. With peace and love, that's a bad fucking friend. Oh my God. I am shocked. Um, it was my birthday. She was unwilling to compromise. Her reason was, I can't be bothered, come to me. It wasn't to do with money or anything. She just didn't want to travel um, and was fine with me having to do it. Yeah, sorry. With peace and love, that's a bad fucking friend. That's a bad friend. That's so bad. Um... Anyway, the problem is every time she complains about the boys she's dating, I've noticed that the majority of the time, the things she says or how she's acting tends to be why the situation chips end. For example, she sent me screenshots and the boy told her he didn't feel up to seeing her a second time the week that after he'd just taken her on a date the day before and wasn't feeling great mentally and could they rearrange for next week? She replied with a thumbs up, burn, um, 
And then five minutes later that he was making her feel like shit for not prioritizing her and it was super and was super rude to him. There was no hope you feeling better. Oh no, there was no hope you feeling better. Oh my God, there was no hope. Uh, there was no hope you feel better. Are you okay, etc. Just very rude and bad vibes. Another situation ended because a boy she'd been seeing for under two months mentioned he was seeing his parents and she invited herself to come and he didn't want her to. I told her they're not in a relationship. So him not wanting to meet his parents yeah it's valid but she got into a huge argument about it and ended it those are just a few examples but there are loads more the thing is she constantly complains about the boys she's talking to but every time she explains why she's annoyed it seems like she's the one causing a problem or being unnecessarily rude um I honestly do want her to find someone, but I'm wondering if next time something happens, I should just be honest with her and tell her she's the issue because she's unwilling to compromise on anything, doesn't consider their feelings and massively self-sabotages. A guy she was talking to didn't reply for two hours and she sent five long paragraphs about how she knew it was because he was talking to someone else and how shit it was for her to keep going through this. He was just at work and replied later. I don't mind helping her with all the dilemmas, but it's actually exhausting to be gassing someone up and saying these men aren't shit when it seems to be her who is the problem all the time. She constantly sends me huge paragraphs about all the boys she's dating and how unfair it is that no one wants her and tries to ring me at 10 a.m. when I'm at work to talk about boys and I'm bored of it when it's her that's ruining the relationship most of the time. I don't want to upset her, but I've been through about 10 failed situationships with her now in the last two years. (laughs) Sorry. What should I do? My boyfriend says she clearly values my opinion a lot as a friend, but he would not put up with her if he was dating her either. So (laughs) I'm at a loss as I don't want to upset her, but also your girl needs help and I need space from her. I feel like there's no space in the friendship to ever talk about me ever when I'm going through personal stuff too it's all about her and how no one wants her please help sorry it's long thank you don't apologize at all I love a long juicy problem so clearly you love your friend it's very clear you love your friend and I'm not gonna be one of those people that's like oh my god fuck her and the friendship you deserve better queen because it's more complicated than that it's more nuanced than that like yeah sure you've sent this email of probably the worst sides of her, but you're still friends with her. So clearly there are a lot of good sides to her too. My honest thing would be to sit down with her and tell her how you feel and say these examples. I think the big emphasis to me is not even necessarily the situation. I mean, first of all, I think you should tell her that she's not behaving in an okay manner at all. Uh, just because you owe her that as a friend. Like, if you don't tell her, like, (laughs) you have to. But I think there needs to be more, like, you very much glossed over the way that she treats you and you've gone straight to the boys thing and the way that she treats these men. And you've meant you've mentioned here and there in the email, oh my God, I need to call it a letter, (laughs) in the email that you've just popped in here and there uh, how you don't like the way that she treats you. I think you should actually focus on that rather than how these situationships going because I think what it sounds like to me is that these situationships no you can't say that right situationships are clearly a very sensitive topic for her and I think that you know it's it's, there's quite a lot to feel sorry for with girls that are obsessed with getting a boyfriend like and I know a lot of us can sit here and be like oh stupid but like it's sad it's sad that as a society, we have been taught that our lives are not complete unless we have a partner, especially as a woman. So I can have empathy for her in that sense. And I feel like if you brought that up, she would get majorly defensive. Um, So I would honestly bring up the way that she treats you in your friendships. I think that you should say, look, you didn't want to travel out of your ends to come to come for my birthday drinks you always talk about yourself. You never ask about me. And you should say like, I love you and I value our friendship. And this is why I'm telling you this. I want to stay friends with you, but I can't keep going on like this. We can't keep going on like this because it's all about you and it's not fair. She is going to get defensive. It's natural for everyone. When Lem, when me and Lem get into a fight and he says something about my character, I get majorly defensive because it's not nice. It's not nice hearing 
things that are wrong with you. But also if you value her friendship, then you need to address it. Otherwise it will only get worse and you will end on bad terms. I think the problem is, is that with a lot of friendships, and this isn't just like a modern day friendship thing. This has always been the problem with friendships. I feel like in a relationship, when there's problems, because you, especially if you live together, because you're constantly around each other. And it's one of those things, when you're in a long-term relationship, you feel really secure. Um, that like, when I have a problem with Lem, I'll bring it up, I'll be like, look, you did this and it really pissed me off and it really upset me. And that's that. And then boom, the resentment's gone. With friendships, I think there's this level of insecurity there. There's this level of like, they could drop me at any moment. That like exists. So I think people are a lot less likely to address problems in friendships. And I think that's when the resentment builds. I think resentment building in friendships is such a big problem. Um, so I would definitely address it. And then I think if it goes well, if you end up falling out for a couple of weeks, maybe that's gonna be the space that you need. But hopefully when you eventually come together, maybe choose another time to talk about the situationships thing. Um, it, you know, if you maybe even when you address the way she treats you in your friendship, you can say, look, the way that you act in situationships isn't okay. And I actually think that the way that you treat me in this friendship is like, there's like a word for it. It's like a, like it's all linked together. I can't think of the fucking word. Um, but yeah. I hope that helps. Please send an update. Um, I do wonder how many people, when I send the agony aunts, how many people actually listen? <laughs> like, as in like, how many people who have sent one listen in? Because I haven't gotten an update from my last two. And I didn't get a DM or a comment or anything like that. So who knows? Um, but yeah, so the last thing that I wanted to talk about <laughs> is the UK has banned two things today, not today, in the last few weeks. Disposable vapes and XL bullies. And I want to talk about it. So if you aren't from the UK and you don't know, the UK has officially banned disposable vapes. So things like Elf Bars, Lost Marys, they are being banned because uh, the UK government believe that they are enticing uh, young, it's like a gateway for young people to smoke and get addicted to nicotine. Especially because like, guys, these vape flavors are fucking absurd. Fucking, how can I smoke a Jolly Rancher flavored vape? That's absurd. Um, so... I can't believe I'm about to say this online, but I vape disposable vapes. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And I talk a lot about waste and plastic, but I did buy a not disposable vape once and I lost it. And those things are like 35 pounds if you want the full kit. Um, so I do buy them solely out of convenience, solely because I lose my vapes a lot. I think unfortunately I talk the talk, but I don't always walk the walk. And it's one of those things where I can't talk about like one environmentally bad thing that I do. Like without being like, oh, but by the way, guys, like I'm actually, I'm really conscious about like consumerism and I don't shop fast fashion and I shop secondhand and I give away all my clothes and I recycle. Like, Joey, you can't talk about that one bad thing that you do without being like, oh no, wait, wait, wait. Like I swear, I swear, I swear. Um, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not like a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh my God, what's the word? I'm not like a, I'm not like a climate denier, <laughs> but that is the, like, I'm going to be honest. And one thing is that I like to keep it real on this podcast. I like to keep it real on this podcast. I vape disposable vapes and I'm not proud of it, but this banning disposable vapes, it's, it's a fucking good thing. Like, and you know what? A majority of people that I know that vape are in agreement. They're in agreement that like, yeah, having these disposable vapes mass produced and which cause so much litter. Yeah. It makes sense why they're banned. Like I accept it. And also they're so fucking addictive. I used to, have I spoken about the fact that I used to smoke? I smoked from the age of 15. So bad. Oh my God. 50. <laughs> this is so, actually, no, to be fair, I think it was 16, 16 to 18. Then I quit for like six months. Um, and then I think it's because the guy I was dating at the time didn't smoke. Um, I quit for six months and then I started smoking again. And I smoked from 18 to when they banned menthol cigarettes. So four, 24, 
I think so. Yeah, 24. Um, I wasn't like a heavy smoker. I smoked like three a day. I think it was one of those things where it was part of my routine. So when I used to uh, work in the salon, I used to walk to work from the tube station, have a cigarette. Um, and then on my break, I had a cigarette. And then when I was on my way home, I would have a cigarette after I got out of the station, the train station. Um, you know, like it was part of my routine. I enjoyed it. It was, to me, it was like eating a packet of crisps or something like that. Um, obviously not very healthy. Um, and then I, they banned mental cigarettes. So I quit smoking and I was like, I don't like the taste of normal cigarettes. Um, and I quit smoking and I, I quit smoking for like a year. And then I got hooked on a stupid guava kiwi passion fruit elf bar and then i moved on to the juicy peach lost mary's yeah it's not great and they are far more addictive because you can smoke them at any time you can smoke them in your flat you can smoke them indoors you can smoke them at parties like they're so easily available as well five pounds five pounds like there's none of that process of because when i used to smoke cigarettes there was a lot of reasons to quit because like, first of all, especially, see, in the summer, smoking's easy. <laughs> in the summer, smoking's easy because, like, you are in the pub garden, you're out in a restaurant, you're having your cigarette. It's very European. It's very European. Um, <laughs> but smoking in the winter time it's the pits whipping on your coat wrapping up going outside hiding under a little shelter smoking a cigarette it's pathetic <laughs> I mean, as an ex-smoker it's not great is it and then you come in and you stink and if you're around people that don't smoke they talk about how much you smell with vaping it's so unnoticeable and then something that I noticed that I was doing which is so bad is that like I, if, if I'm anything, I'm fucking lazy. And I would like, if I couldn't be able to make breakfast, I'd just vape all morning to fill up my appetite. Oh my God. So I think it's a good thing. I think it's a really, really good thing. I think it's about fucking time. And honestly, I think what a fucking bad idea. What a bad idea was that? And I can't believe I started vaping them. I'm so annoyed and I'm very, very excited to quit. Um, and then the next thing is XL bullies. Now, one thing that me and Jack said is I don't think people should weigh their opinions in on shit that they don't know. And I don't know a lot about banning dog breeds and stuff like that. And I do feel bad for these dogs, guys. I feel, because what happens when you, when you ban a group of dogs? Do they put them down? Is that what happens? Or is it one of those things where it's like, you aren't allowed to buy a puppy. So they like get rid of all the breeders and then they wait for the other, other, other bullies to die out I don't know but I don't know enough about like banning dog breeds I know it's like not the breed it's the owner I know it's not like a particularly aggressive breed maybe I don't know I literally know nothing about it um but also unfortunately these dogs which are fucking huge they're hench they attract a they attract owners that won't train them properly and won't look after them and um end up training them up to be aggressive dogs and things like that so it's one of those things where it's like like if it's an actual like clearly it's a problem a lot of people are being attacked by xl bullies i mean if the only solution is banning them or at least making sure people have a license to look after them and to own them then then i guess that has to be but i don't know enough about it um one thing that what the guys that xl bully protest the i like it's so strange like it's actually it feels like it's not real because one like I've seen multiple times on XL bully discords of people being like, "What about all the pedophiles on the street? What about the pedophiles on the street?" And I'm like, guys, you do realise pedophiles are banned as well. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, sorry, sorry, I'm not laughing at like the banning of dogs or like if they have to put that's awful. But there are particular things from this XL bully discourse that are kind of funny. But um, I'd love to know your opinions because. Also, people have, like, been killed by these dogs. That's so bad. Um, but, yeah. Is that actually all I have to say? I think so. Sorry, I feel like this is a really long episode, a very chatty episode. I got emotional at some points. Um, but, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know if any of you guys are going to be doing the Lingoda Sprint Challenge because I'm also going to be uh, using Lingoda for the next couple of months and I'm so excited. Uh, yes, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next week for a new episode. Bye!